Sleeper Car, a car that has high performance but intentionally looks to be ordinary or even beat up. That's what I plan to build in automation. Instead of spamming the quality sliders or all that good stuff, I want to build an engine that runs on nitromethane while keeping the car entirely stock. Hey guys, it's Trice here and let's get on with our build. So with the panel material of this wannabe Ford Escort sedan type of body up going on here, Let's choose the panel material. We'll start off with a treated steel panel material with good old monocoque type of chassis because it's pretty much the standard issue of all automakers nowadays and cars nowadays. With a galvanized steel type of chassis material with the engine placement, good old front transfers because, well, it's gotta be front wheel drive and take on a Honda Civic driver out there. With the front suspension, let's keep this fairly realistic. So let's use a McPherson strut for the front and the rear, kind of interesting. We'll choose semi trailing arm for the back. For the engine, I already made the regular gas-powered version of this engine, not the nitromethane version. So it's an inline-4 engine made out of cast iron with the bore set to 84.5 millimeters, while the stroke is lowered to 80... Excuse me? Okay, stroke lowered to 80 millimeters to get the engine size to 1,795 cubic centimeters, or about 1.8 liters, with a dual overhead cam 4 valve made out of aluminum. So for the crank counterbalance and pistons, knowing about nitromethane fuel being very overpowered in this game, basically in real life too. So they all gotta be as strong as possible, so build steel crankshaft with the counterbalance set to a lightweight titanium and the piston set to a regular forge with a harmonic damper installed for the balancing mass. And for the compression, let's start out with like an 11 or something like that because it's probably gonna yell at me that this is too low or something stupid like that. Camp profile, springs and lifters. We'll leave these here for now, and the RPM for the regular gas-powered motor, it's set to 7,000 RPM. Same thing for the nitro-methane version 2. Now let's say why not put a turbocharger in this bad boy, let's probably do all this a little bit later because we gotta know what the hell we're doing up in here. So for the fuel system, we're gonna be choosing the multi-plate electronic fuel injector with a single throttle setup running on a performance mid-intake because, well, it's a sleeper car, what else could you ask for? And the sliders at the manifold size, fuel mapping up in here, we'll probably change that in a little bit too. And right here, the main event for the fuel type, we're gonna be selecting the Nitro Bed thing, which is 127 AKI, which is this right here in Ron, if you're overseas and all that stuff. And finally for the engine, for the headers and all that good stuff, it pretty much did it right away with some cast headers, but that's not gonna be the case here. We're gonna be choosing some tubular racing headers with the exhaust size... Maybe 2.5 to start things off, or 63.5 millimeters. And to make things legal per se, with the emissions and all that stuff, including noise, let's choose a high flow 3 catalytic converter with two straight through buffers and 603.7 horsepower. But there's some terrible turbo lag at 4,000 RPM where this really kicks in. Okay, unutilized fuel octane. I was kind of right about the octane being, oh yeah, we got plenty to go. Where will this lead be up to? Okay, we're dropping right here. So I'm thinking a 11.8 will do for decompression. So since we got plenty of airflow going through the compressor and a little bit on the turbine, let me drop this back. Okay, here we go. Quite a bit up in here. We'll look at the turbo grid for safety's sake with the surge stress. So we got about 5% roughly in surge stress. Let's keep on going. We're losing a little bit of power, but the turbo spools up earlier than it is right now. Did we just gain like one horsepower right here? So we're on 640. Uh, yeah, almost like one and a half, two horsepower right there. And also, let's use boost control. Not that bad. So we're going to increase the quality just a tad for a few components here, especially for the turbocharger right here. I don't want to do like a plus 15 and make things better for myself. Look at this. Plus 15, 2200 horsepower, but I'm not that kind of guy. So with the exhaust up in here, I'm increasing the size as so, but it seems like we're gaining like 15 horsepower as I increase the exhaust. So let me do a 3-inch exhaust, see where we're at. Ooh, almost 650 horsepower, so I'll make some final adjustments and call the engine as is. All right, let's finalize the engine right here. So we're making 650 horsepower, 6,500 RPM, with the torque at 603.8 pounds feet of torque at 4,700 RPM. Not too bad for a 1.8 liter inline four engine with some nitromethane fuel. So let's give a listen to what this nitro fuel engine sounds like right now. Sounds like your everyday gas motor, but it is what it is, I guess. 
Now going further with our build with this car, so for the drive type, we're going to be choosing the front wheel drive, or transverse front wheel drive system. Let's choose a manual 5 speed because this one's had a 4 speed auto transmission. Even though I kind of take back of my transmission, this is a 5 speed option I meant. And at top speed, let's check this out, uh, about 230 miles an hour. Why the hell not? So for the tires, hard long life, I think 185s will do. I woke up what the Ford Escort had in terms of tire width. So there are P185 65s with 14 inch rims. So I got the width correct. So we're running on 14 inch rims and we have to drop the size to it says 65 right here, right here. So the tire diameter is 590 millimeters. Oh freaking boy, guys. For the brakes, let's choose a solid disc two piston, 250 millimeters. Let's do 250s front and back. So solid disc one piston, also a 250. And let's drop the rear brake force size or a percentage. Start at 50 because it's going to yell at me that this is too much. And also rim offset. Let's do something about this right now. All right, much better. So for the aerodynamics at the under tray, pff, who needs one anyways? With the brake airflow, let's do a 15 to cool them down a bit. And for the interior of this car, let's choose the basic interior with a basic CD player because this is the base model car that we got going here. So for the steering, let's choose the regular hydraulic rack and pinion type of steering with just ABS brakes only with some basic 1990s safety standards. Sucks you have to hit the little, like choose whatever safety standard you want and then click back to the earlier option just to choose this right here. And lastly, the suspension, also basic. Standard springs, twip to dampers with passive sway bars. Let's start off with normal preset for now. And we are doing fine in terms of handling at slow speeds and drivability. Not so much at sportiness factor. And the brakes suffer from severe brake fade. So the rear brake force is kind of high up in here. Let's do a 42 up front, 102 up, uh, 102 up front, 42 in the back. There we go. And apparently this car's top speed is rated at 221 miles per hour with a 0 to 60 in 6.55 seconds. Oh my god, folks. I mean, we're not going to put a wing or any lips or none of that stupid. This is 100% bare bones type of stock budget car that we got going here. So what do we get in terms of the time at the automation test track? Let's get a time only. We're not going to like watch the car go around on stuff. 2 minutes, 26 seconds, 81 milliseconds. Not too bad. The top gear test track, aka airfield track. 1 minute 29 seconds, 7 milliseconds. Seems I in a way. Alright, so I raised this bad boy up, and we're gonna be ready to do a time-lapse build of me building this wannabe Ford Escort as so. I'll do a time-lapse portion of this part of the video by me designing with the front end, the rear, and all that good stuff. And also, I'll clone the car as is and put the regular pump gas model of this same exact engine. We'll compare those two in BMW Drive. So let's commit to the time-lapse portion of the video right now. So for the design of this sedan, aka the knockoff Ford Escort that took me 50 minutes to make, I started with the headlights provided by the mod author who created this body. Same thing with the taillights as you'll see later. So I attempted to replicate the front grille the best I could. There isn't a lot of oval-like grills that are close to matching with the real-life Ford Escort's grill. So I settled with this wide, semicircular grille piece. I also added the bottom grille, the side vents, the trim, and the badge. What's interesting with this badge is that it's a Ford badge, but it's renamed Drake, and it shows a dragon in the middle of the logo. That's the same thing with this entire badge mod pack that the modder provided in the Automation Steam Workshop. For the sides, I added the door seams to work as the indents for the side doors including a plastic trim piece that goes right below the seam fixture. For the back, I added the taillights as so. Same thing with the separate reverse light right below the brake lights, along with adding this glass-looking rear trim piece that goes in between the taillights. I also added the car's name, the manufacturer logo, the trunk keyhole, and the license plate, including the front one too. I then added a green-looking paint job to wrap up with this design. So after getting everything done with this build, here's what it came out. This is the 2001 Drake Usher SE. This model had a 125 horsepower motor that was tuned to the next level. I hope adding 5 times the power would be worth it with everything remaining stock except for the engine. Alrighty, so I finally got the freaking Drake Usher SC, the Nitro version of this wannabe Ford Escort all done. It kind of sucks with the badging here, like I mentioned. 
Even though the bot author is like almost sexually attracted to freaking dragons up in here, I mean, this is all dragon stuff right here based on real car manufacturers, which I used a freaking Drake badge, which is basically just Ford, but a dragon in the middle. But anyways, before exporting this bad boy to BMG Drive along with the, the pump gas version, despite our only five problems with this car, such as some severe brake fade, some severe wheel spin, the low capacity should be quite low, the credits to front end should be quite narrow, and some wheel spin reduce the car's drivability. So let me figure out how to export two of these cars in one selection in BMG Drive, rather than having two separate models in the game. So here we are at the bottom of the map of Lost Injurious, and I did manage to export both the nitro-filled version and the pump gas version right here. So all I did in the export window when exporting your car is just I unticked the zip mod checkbox there and named the cars the same, which is the Drake Usher SC for the pump gas version and the nitro version, which will show us right here, which will show us two configurations with this here car that runs on regular old fuel and nitro methane right here. So at least I got that out of the way as so with both of these cars. We're gonna compare the difference between this car and the regular gasoline version up on the highway as they bring it up right here to start our basic performance tests. So starting with the nitro methane version of this car, we're gonna start with the zero to 62 acceleration test followed by the 62 to zero brake test and lastly a top speed run with this vehicle and just a 0 to 60 at top speed run of the pump gas model behind me. Anchor rate accelerate, now. Wheel spin, as we're at first gear. Two second gear, 0 to 62 at 6.52 seconds at 307.20 feet, so this was pretty accurate to 0 to 60 when we got in automation and right here in BMG Drive. So kids, if you want to make a sleeper car, put some wider ass tires, specifically like semi-slicks or sports tires if you want to go fast and accelerate hard. So for the brakes, 62 miles an hour, go. Hard on the brake. Engine's off. 62 to 0 in 2.97 seconds of 119.62 feet. So next time when you're hard on the brakes, just use the freaking clutch no matter what. So for a top speed run, more ridiculous wheel spin. Are we going to get a better time? Uh, just about the same of 6.55 seconds versus, oh uh, no, just about the same. All right, traffic cut through the frick gorge point. All right, over 150 miles an hour. Let's just use the RK mode so we don't have to concentrate on shifting. Just concentrate on traffic. Don't cut through the gorge point to make your last second exit. 180 miles an hour, big ass jump. Uh, gonna switch to the G right here. Jesus Christ, man. Put through the D like a trick. An NBA 2K23 up in here or so. Oh, why are you switch shifting lanes, you dumbass? Yeah, you see what that blue book did to me. He went from the passing lane to the right lane and all that good stuff. I thought he was gonna commit to the lane change and just go from there. So the highest top speed I got with this car was 181 miles per hour, if I recall correctly. Going about 200 miles an hour. The tires are skidding hellishly. And the damn freaking LeGrand cut me off. All right, I decided to turn the traffic off because it was a freaking nuisance to be getting cut off and all that bad stuff. So we're about 200 miles an hour. 200. Now, 200 miles an hour, some extreme wheel spin. Coming through this right-hander by the freaking gate. Not a gate, but uh, 200 miles an hour it is. Whatever. Tire deflated over the freaking main road as we go, which is the first time doing it in this map. Roll over. I'm not telling your dog to roll over, for God's sake. I'm telling the car to roll over. So we're rolling over into another road. And landed on our two wheels? Yeah, and our two wheels. It's the back tires have survived. We can't steer left or right as so. Now let's get in front of the nitro version and get ready for a just a zero to sixty-two and a top speed run with this car. So let's get ready to start now with the pump gas model. First gear. No crazy wheel spin into second gear as so. So zero to sixty-two. Let's see. Pretty healthy. In 9.55 seconds of 504.34 feet. Not too bad. The brakes aren't really that much of a concern for this here part of the test here. I mean, we did the brakes with the nitro methane version, but for this car, it's not really that necessary. So for a top speed run with the 86 AKI, AK regular gas or pump gas, whatever you call version, we pretty much reached its top speed. And going for the red line, and now we're redlining 130 miles an hour as so. Compared to the other one, where it never reached its red line at a 230 mile an hour top speed. All right, Mr. Bridge Pillars, do your job. Everything as is. You're welcome with the engine still running with the freaking headers and exhaust completely exposed. What the hell? 
So for the after effect destruction, loose polygon there. Elsewhere, it's just mainly the front end is all bent up and all that stuff. So let's find another map to do our time trial runs right now. So here we are at the racetrack in the regular vanilla map of Hirochi Raceway, and we'll be doing one lap with the medium racing circuit with a rolling star. As you can see here, we're at the final turn of this final straightaway with the nitromethane version of the Usher. So we're doing only one lap of this car and one lap of the pump gas bottle to see the difference in terms of times between the two vehicles. So start things off with the nitromethane model here and ready, go. Insta wheel spin. And I can barely control this in terms of steering. Damn, that's horrible. So let's see what it's like making a left-hander. Front wheel drive drifting, boys! <laughs> oh my god, let's just make this a clean run. Okay, please. Left-hander. Third gear. Drifting. Freaking horror movie type of uh, freaking tire squealing noise up in here as we can't steer left as so for whatever reason because of what freaking weight transfer? The power try to keep this bad boy straight? Even if this type of power and if this would have been rear wheel drive, I'll be sliding like crazy up in here. Brakes. Damn, almost 700 degrees. 40 below. All right, corrected myself way back there as we are going to be doing this corner cutting. Well, I'm gonna let this slide for the corner cut because, well, with that turn, we're gonna be pretty much be at this time what we got right now. So I'm not gonna worry too much about that little tiny mistake right there. What I'm worried about is making a right-hander at 120-ish miles an hour, a thousand degree, it's starting to fade. Oh boy. 250 millimeter brakes, and we're starting to fade up front with some regular-ass solid disc brakes. Coming out of the final turn. The wheel spin is going to keep the car as straight as much as possible because the torque steer, this and that type of stuff of a time of 1 minute, 34 seconds, 650 milliseconds, which will put us in first place because, well, I never did a rolling start at the medium race layout of this here racetrack, so into the wall as we go. What horrible camera angle did I set up? So we got the tire down, the mirror going, and I leave... Is this like the hose for the radiator or something of the uh, inner core? I think that is. Well, whatever. Let's use the pump gas model and compare the difference between the two in terms of time, handling, and all that good stuff at this track. All right, here's the pump gas model. It's starting. Ready? Go. Little baby amount of wheel spin. I don't care. 123 brake horsepower, 123 pounds feet of torque. Look at that right hander. Damn, that was pretty smooth. Good 0 to 60 at 9.26 seconds. Nice. How about a left hander right here? Ooh, oversteer. Oversteer but I managed to pull myself together. I swear if this here freaking time trial run is a hundred times more docile, and it's gonna be easier, but way more easier than the Nitro Mete version of this car. But what is more tame and more easier, but what I mean is if I get a better time compared to the other car. Like the last one, we were wheel spinning like crazy, trying to get around a corner like wheel spin. The car tries to straighten itself out to the point where it refused to turn the car as so. So we're about a minute to go. I know it was a 1 minute 34 seconds, 650 milliseconds. Let's see, right hander, stay on that curb. Good. So a little bit of overseer, stay on that curb. I swear to God. Let's see here. All right, 30, 31, 32, 33. I think we beat the freaking nitromethane car, I swear! We did! We just beat the freaking nitromethane car by a whole second. So a 1 minute 33 seconds, 733 milliseconds, compared to 1 minute 34 seconds, 650 milliseconds, with the nitromethane model. Are you kidding me? It's to celebrate. Get a front end collision, and there goes the plates, and the radiator is leaking. Are you kidding me, man? A freaking 123 horsepower regular gas motor had smoked a 600 plus horsepower nitro bethane version of this engine. So kids, in the near future, if you want to build a sleeper car, put some like 255 racing tires and just go from there. So for the final part of the video, let's give it the old treatment because, well, it had lost. Drop it down the big ass ramp of Car Jump Arena and just go from there. So take it to the top right now. So here we are at the top of the ramp as so with the Nitro Mete versus car. So use a Nitro version no matter what. So we got a 3 light, a 4 light, and a 5 light. You ready to accelerate with the screaming ass car? Now. Sick camera work. M. Night Shyamalan, hire me right now. There we go. 0 to 60. This is the 0 to 60. We want 5.17 seconds of 186.85 feet. Fourth gear? 
into fifth gear. 191 mile an hour launch. Where are we going to stand in terms of the jump? But slowed us down a little bit. And slowed us out way down. Are we going to get the 500 marker? Ooh, just shy of like a 495, I believe. So we were just very, very shy of reaching 500. So full time, cartwheeling end over end into the pool. Save the engine, turn the ignition off, and we are stuck right here. So by looking at this car as we bring us over to some drier land as so, so we made a freaking wannabe concept car with a sloped, super sloped ass design because of the initial impact. I mean, this looks pretty aerodynamical, don't you think? So the inner core is completely exposed, parts of the manifold, the freaking fuel stuff, all good stuff, the tires missing, and more weird stuff with the body because of the crash. Alright, so for the final part of the video, as we're going to be screaming in the first gear, just like that, so we'll be going at a very, very high speed by crash yourselves at the final bridge bar to get a high speed crash test going with this car. I mean, we did some crash tests by crashing the traffic and slamming the wall at the time trial map at the... Whoops. I would say I did my time, I smashed myself at the wall at the Hirochi Raceway map, so let's get ready to pop the curb right here. I thought we had to go even further, I'm kinda used to Brutal Slope or something, so, right here. It appears to be an overlapping crash at 185-ish miles an hour upon collision. Let's do it 50 times and get a camera going right here. And get ready for the bang. Bang. What a shot from Curry. Says frickin' Mike Breen. There goes the tire, our 185 wide tire. In real life, I should be putting some 245s, 255s, or even more for a car this powerful. So here's the sparks. Here's it in full time. Uh, excuse me, full time. I'm hitting all. Oh, the FN key. Whoops. Well, I screw up from there, but it's not a major screw up. So for the final construction vehicle, so we got the engine completely disabled because the main engine is broken right here, how it in red. And the rear end, completely fine, except for this loose polygon because of the collision and the front end. Well, finally, from a severe front end hit like this, it finally killed the engine because we got the headers exposed and some, uh, some parts of the engine just crinkled up because of this heavy impact. So that'll do it with automation and beam and G drive with the Drake Usher SE. For a car with only a tuned nitro engine, you've seen how bad it was. It got beaten by its stock counterpart by a whole second at Hirochi Raceway. It's embarrassing for a car that's only good for straight line speed. Don't take this to a track or on the streets because you'll need some wider tires to compensate that wheel spin. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. So this is Tri's Rising Up, and signing out.